Okay, so let's take a look at the set of questions here we have that are under the topic nuclear chemistry. Again, we have all of this information about the uh, fission reaction for uranium-235 here. And we're also given some half-lives underneath that. And um, just don't forget about this information as you're answering questions. So you have the reference tables and the information that's given. These solid lines are kind of the boundaries for the information. And again, we have a set of four questions here under nuclear chem. All right, so let's take a look. In question four, it says to um, oh gee, sorry, explain in terms of both reactants and products why the reaction represented by the nuclear equation is a fission reaction. Well, they're really asking about a definition for a fission reaction, but don't forget about in terms of both reactants and products. So look at what's happening. In fission, there's a split. I have uranium-235 splitting into these pieces. In this case, it's xenon-140, strontium-94. Also, you start with one neutron, you end up getting more neutrons out. In this case, one neutron, and you get two out. So how do you answer the question? Well, again, make sure that you're describing fission. So a simple answer would be that uranium-235, after being hit by a neutron, is splitting into pieces as products. If you want to explain what those products are at that point, go for it. All right, let's move on to question five. All right, so once again, just like you saw in the other video, we are going to write a equation for, in this case, xenon-140, and then fill in the missing product. Here it is here. I cut and pasted it from the answer booklet. And once again, this is beta, beta minus decay. You're going to see this a lot, pretty much on every exam, because it's easy for students to mess up because of the minus 1 here for the beta particle. So let's take a look. All right. So remember, your mass numbers on both sides of the equation must be equal. Those are the big numbers. And your atomic numbers on the bottom must be equal on both sides. So you can think of the arrow again as an equal sign. So I have 140 is equal to 0 plus what number? Obviously, that's 140. And then I have 54 is equal to a minus 1 plus what number? Of course, the answer is 55, because it's 55 minus 1, that's 54. Again, students will put 53 by mistake, but there's a minus sign here. So be very careful with that. Okay, so we need the identity of element 55, because remember, an atom's identity is based on atomic number only, and you look it up, and it's cesium. So there's your answer. All right, let's take a look at question 6. Question 6, half-life question again. So, pretty much for nuclear chem, definitely look out for a decay, beta decay question, balancing, and half-life problem for sure, whether it's on the short answer section or multiple choice. All right, so in question six, it says determine the time required for the original 24 gram sample. So we need this info of strontium-94 to decay until only one and a half grams remains unchanged. As I mentioned in the other video, I like to set up a table, mass and time. So in this case, it's not a fraction thing, so we're not starting with one, we're starting with 24 grams, and we're going to one and a half grams. We want to know the time to get there, and of course we're starting at time zero. Now we're going to fill in the table. For this, you have to realize you've got to go back. You are given the half-life for strontium-94 as 1.25 minutes. So you can go ahead and fill it in. Remember on the mass side, you're having as you go. And on time side, you're adding as you go. Okay, so let's fill in the mass column. After one half-life, 24 goes to 12. Then another half-life, 12 goes to 6. Another half-life, 6 goes to 3. And then finally, 3 goes to 1.5. So what am I doing with time? 
Well, time, again, I'm adding. My half-life is, where are you, 1.25. So after one half-life, 1.25, I think it's minutes, yep, goes by. Another half-life goes by, and I have 6 grams, so that's 2.50. Another half-life goes by, and I have 3 grams. So now I'm adding. I'm See, I'm not doubling. The answer here is not 5. It's 1.25 plus 2.5. For 3.75 and then finally one more half-life and that's 3.75 plus 1.25 and we end up with our answer being five minutes okay um, don't not use a calculator even for something so simple and put it out on paper so you see it okay the other way you could have done this is you could have just counted the number of half-lives one two, three, four, and taken 1.25 and multiplied it by four to get five. Your teacher might have showed you that way as well. Okay, doesn't matter how you get to the answer as long as you're getting there. And it's correct, of course. All right, last question here. So for this last question, here's the diagram. I cut and pasted it from the uh, answer booklet. It says, draw an arrow to represent the path of the emitted beta particle in an electric field. Okay, so I have an electric field. I have my positive side and my negative side, right? And we know opposites attract, same charges repel. If you don't know, check out reference table O for a beta particle. Remember, you got that minus sign. So we're talking about a negative particle. So what does that mean? As it's going through, it's going to get attracted to the positive. So you could draw it like this. You could have drawn it as long as you have it curving towards the positive because it's starting out, or not starting out, but it is a negative particle. That's the correct answer. Okay. So anything that's negative will get attracted towards the positive. Anything that's positive will get attracted towards the negative. And if they ever ask you, let me show you, about gamma radiation, okay, you see here for gamma, has no mass, no charge. That would go straight through the uh, charge plates. Okay, we have a few more questions to go. Check out the next video on nuclear chem.